And this for Saturday's Australian and Oceania channel. My name is David Tones. Quarter past six here in Queensland. Quarter past seven, daylight saving. And welcome to those who have uh, just uh, come on board. Uh, the uh, primary activity is the developing a tropical low. And the monsoon trough is to once again uh, kick in. We have multiple areas uh, of interest. We have uh, two over in the southwest Indian Ocean, and I think three. Uh, the Bureau of Meteorology is uh, monitoring a low pressure system to the northwest of Vanuatu. I think it's actually in the Coral Sea region. And uh, it's one uh, 95p Southern Cook uh, Island or Southern Cook's uh, Island. And one near uh, Fiji. The I'll just post this into the chat. 95p is the one I think further east. It's down to 1000 millibars, 25 knots. And There's a quite a bit of uh, activity uh, that goes on uh, behind the scenes, especially the switching. And we will definitely uh, keep an eye on the Tonga scene. I will bring the uh, latest information to you, the viewer. The uh, stream uh, will go on autopilot. I might have to leave the uh, HQ. But on the screen is the Bureau's Brisbane radar, left hand side. The uh, same, but in the radar scope, right hand side. And this is a live view from my HQ to the north of Brisbane. Bureau Meteorology has in place various uh, warnings and we're focusing on severe weather warnings and including severe thunderstorm activity. There have been two reports of winds, wind gusts in excess of 100 kilometres an hour and the rain uh, continues, the storm activity uh, continues and it is tracking to the east. But slowly and for some parts of Australia the drought has now broken which is good news. The countryside is starting to see some uh, greenery the wildlife is increasing and let's have a look at what's making the weather news i source the uh, information off the weatherzone.com.au website And just relating to the major underwater volcanic eruption, it's very important, I'll actually post the link here in the chat. The ash cloud halfway to Tonga, uh, halfway to Africa. It is now almost a week since the 
undersea volcano erupted in the Pacific Ocean, triggering everyone, everything, from terrifying tsunamis in Tonga to majestic ash cloud sunrises here in Queensland. The ash cloud has now crossed northern Australia, making its way across the Indian Ocean. Now, this is today. By Friday morning, it should just about have reached Madagascar, the large island nation just to the east of the main African continent. Now, this could impact the two invests over there in the region. The cloud could be uh, seen extending across the Asia for Shark Bay in WA, Western Australia, in this dramatic image taken by the Himalaya 8 satellite. And that is on my list of things to do. I'm able to download uh, all of the uh, Himalaya uh, 8 satellite imagery for the last four weeks. Those of you who follow the weather closely might have a question at this point. If weather systems travel around the globe from west to east, how is this ash cloud travelling from east to west? Not a bad question. So I'll just repeat that and uh, you can uh, paste your response in the chat. Uh, my um, position as manager of the AU channel, the uh, stream will uh, cut under 12 hours or on or at the 12 hour mark. YouTube doesn't save uh, videos, to my knowledge, after 12 hours. So uh, my position is to save the uh, video so you can actually replay when you like. But the uh, play feature is active uh, while we're streaming live. So the question is, if weather systems travel around the globe from west to east, how come this ash cloud is travelling from east to west? I won't give the answer. And then there's another uh, link in the article. How rare are tsunamis in Australia? And there are a couple of other links. In the Bureau's latest advisory, the Black, and I'll post the link, the black area in the uh, graphics indicates that the ash cloud is sitting between about 42,000 feet and 63,000 feet, which is good news for aviation, as commercial jets tend to cruise at somewhere between 31 and 38,000 feet. So the cloud, the ash cloud, is sitting between 42 and 63,000 feet. And it's basically to the north of Perth, WA. It is not known when the ash cloud will dissipate. Historically, the evidence suggests it takes anywhere between days or years, depending on the volume of ash. And before I post a link, why we know that the ash cloud is moving from east to west, but why weather systems track from the west to east?
and Crunchy8. Uh, it's good to see you here once again. So I posed the question and humanitarian aid should arrive in the Tonga region tomorrow, Friday, which will be good news. The priority is to get fresh water supplies flowing. I'm hoping that either New Zealand or Australia will have on board a water purifier uh, system. I know the equipment is available because I think uh, it's been used here in Australia. And I think uh, in other areas of the uh, Pacific. I don't know whether it's Fiji, Vanuatu, but I know we, we do have the capacity to purify water. So the question is, why, why do systems If weather systems travel around the globe from west to east, how come the ash is travelling from east to west? So, weather systems west to east, and the ash east, west to east, east to west. And I'll post the link shortly. In other news, widespread rain looms as cyclone risk increases. There are signs that rain and thunderstorms will again increase over northern Australia during the next week, raising the likelihood of tropical cyclone development in the region. Monsoon trough expected to move over northern Australia during the next few days causing rain and storm activity to increase in northern parts of Queensland and Northern Territory and WA. This increases this increase in convective activity could cause low pressure system to develop within the trough, most likely over the team we'll see later this week. Some models suggest that this low could move south towards the Kimberley coast on the weekend early next week where it has the uh, potential to uh, develop into a tropical cyclone if the low lingers over the ocean for long enough there is a chance of developing into a tropical cyclone off the Kimberley early next week. However, if it moves too close to or over land too quickly it's unlikely to develop. At this stage there is only a low risk of cyclone development and if it does happen it will most likely be between uh, Monday and Wednesday somewhere in the Kimberley Regardless of whether we see a tropical system, the southward moving monsoon trough, which is good news, 
will still cause an increase in rain and thunderstorms over Northern Australia in the coming week. The new injection of tropical moisture will also spread further south next week combined with another moisture laden and air mass left behind by ex-tropical cyclone Tiffany. As a result of these two solid tropical air masses, the large area of central east and southeastern Australia likely to see substantial rain during the next 7 to 10 days. Accumulated rainfall tunnels over the next 10 days forecast to be around 30 to 60 millimetres across the broad area including the Northern Territory, Northern WA, Queensland, South Australia, New South Wales, ACT, Victoria and Tasmania. Some areas may see isolated falls of 100 to 250 millimetres over the next 10 days and some places could also pick up 300 millimetres. This widespread rain has the potential to cause flooding in several states and territories. It will also be falling in areas of the country that are usually fairly dry in summer, with some inland areas of South Australia in line to receive more than two times their average summer rainfall in the space of one week. Flood advisories, severe weather warnings, tropical cyclone warnings will be issued when necessary over the next 10 days. That is developing news and I will post this uh, link and the uh, stream will be on autopilot for probably the next uh, hour and a half. I've got to uh, head away from the, the uh, HQ but I will be back and that is the uh, developing news the link has been posted to the latest on the ash cloud that is sitting off the WA coast Thank you. 
13 it's Australian Asian Channel just after 4 a.m. here in Queensland, 5 a.m. at New South Wales, Victoria, Tasmania. On the screen is one of the scenes.
And it's 4 to 13, 5 a.m. here in Queensland, 6 a.m. Daylight saving time. On the screen is the live view from my Brisbane HQ looking south. And I'm under a uh, strong wind warning along with uh, fast moving uh, cloud. On the right hand side, you can actually see my uh, weather station. And so far this month, I've uh, close to 40 millimetres of rain. Severe weather warning for damaging winds remains in place in the Darling Downs and Granite Belt forecast districts. Damaging wind gusts possible along the far southeastern Darling Downs and the Granite Belt during this morning. High pressure system moves into the Tasman Sea while trough lines over the western Queensland and South Australia. This weather pattern is producing a vigorous easterly flow over parts of the Great Dividing Range. Strong winds averaging 50 to 60 kilometres an hour with damaging wind gusts in excess of 90 kilometres an hour possible over the elevated terrain in the far southeastern Darling Downs and the Granite And the warning area is Stanthorpe. And a strong wind warning, Townsville, Mackay, Capricornia, Fraser Island Case, Harvey Bay, Morton Bay, Sunshine Case and a Gold Case waters. So a strong wind warning from Townsville right down to the Queensland and New South Wales border. Shortly I'll bring up a live streaming webcam point danger. The uh, mouth of the uh, Tree River and the webcam is inside the Volunteer Marine Rescue Radio Base Station at that location. It's also provided for the Maritime Section, uh, New South Wales Government Department, as coming up. And also within the next uh, hour, the stream will temporarily uh, take less than a minute's break. Repeating, close to the top of the next hour, the stream will take a break to enable refreshing of software to take place and it will be back. There is no plans to terminate the uh, stream at times it will be on uh, autopilot. We're keeping an eye on a multi centered low pressure system over there in the Timor Sea. As a surf warning for New South Wales, severe weather warning remains in place for parts of the northwest slopes and plains and the northern tablelands. So there are two severe weather warnings in place. The uh, New South Wales severe weather warning area has decreased in size. And a few flood warnings for various rivers down there in New South Wales. And it looks like a new one for the Wilsons River. The Bogan River has had its uh, has seen a final flood warning issued. Also coming up, we'll have a look at the uh, satellite Hemawari 8 
imagery. And it, in addition to the severe weather warnings currently in place for uh, New South Wales and Queensland, South Australia is also under a severe weather warning for heavy uh, rainfall. And this is due to two systems. One of the systems is ex-tropical cyclone Tiffany. West Coast, the lower air peninsula, eastern air peninsula, the northwest pastoral and the northeast pastoral district. Heavy rainfall likely across central and northern parts of South Australia over coming days. An upper low pressure system associated with surface trough developing over the rest of the state and it's expected to move slowly eastward over the next few days. Heavy rainfall may lead to flash flooding also expected to develop early on fr Friday over central western parts of the state, extending to remaining parts of the air plenchant and northeast pastoral districts during today and towards the Flinders district on Saturday. Widespread rainfall totals to 20 to 50 millimetres expected, with heavier falls of around 50 to 100 millimetres, and likely with thunderstorm activity. Now it's also the potential for damaging winds with thunderstorms, However, the Bureau of Meteorology will continue to monitor. Flood watch is also in place. Sejuna, Marla, Cooper Pedy, Roxby Downs, Marie and Woomera. And 34 millimetres of rain to 4.30am today. Sejuna, 34 millimetres. And the flood watch has been issued. For the Flinder, Flinders Ranges West Coast, the Air Peninsula Northwest, Northeast Parcel Districts. So, flood, wa flood warning. Four day rainfall totals to midnight Sunday of 60 to 100 millimetres. Isolated higher falls in excess of 120 millimetres. And this is one notice that people need to be aware of. I expect to see more warnings issued even for Victoria.